So today on Biggie Power, we're going to mount a radiator. Yep, that'll do. So the radiator for the cooling system, this is a thicker cord standard mini radiator. It's what others have used successfully, or I hope successfully. Not many people have run these long enough. Uh, a few things I'm going to have to do. I'm probably going to have to just cut that drain bung off and weld it up. It's no main bother really, I'm not going to be able to get to it anyway, even if I did leave it on. That pipe there is facing forward because we have flipped the radiator around the other direction because of the angle at the top here. So then what we'll do is have the pipe coming this way and have a big, ah, ah, got two choices. You either go up and all around up to here or I'm figuring I'm gonna go round the back there to the front here and have the pipe sat basically in front of here with some heat wrap because obviously this is in the way. So that's what we're gonna do. First few things, chop that off, cut that off there, nice and clean, cut that off, and then work out where we're putting the pipes and do we want to fit bigger pipes in this? Probably, because uh, if we fit that pipe there, we then got to have like um, a reducer or something, but if I use the same diameter pipe as that, then we can just get the same diameter pipe. Same situation there, which is probably what we're gonna do. So let's chop it up and see what we got. So I did shoot myself in the foot a bit with positioning of the lambda sensor, just 10 mil that way, and my life would be easy. But as it is, it's not, and it's not there. So we've taken a little corner off the radiator. It's not gonna exactly be a major performance issue. And we've got the clearance we need. Little fettle here, little fettle there. We're gonna make a bracket now that comes off the side of the radiator and it loops into this nice little M6 bolt. Doesn't need to be much, it's not holding the weight, it's just steadying it. And then we'll make a couple of mounts at the bottom for it to sit in with some rubber feet and then we'll look at where we put in pipe work. If it isn't trained, it's helicopters. Oh well. I think we've got the radiator in a position where minimal trimming of the front clip, American thing, is done. We've made a bracket off this little M6 bolt. Uh, we've smoothed her off, etc. We've just cleaned up these two faces here. I'm gonna get the lambda out of the way, and then I'm gonna actually weld the first bit on the car so it's in the right position I need. So I'm just gonna wedge a couple of bits with a bit of cardboard or rubber or something, just to get exactly where I want it, make sure that the wing, everything is fitted nice, and we'll weld it on the initial part in situ. So there we go, welded on uh, our little attachment, we'll buff that up to clean, and then we've welded in that hole we kind of made because we sliced off. So I'm just gonna let that cool, it's absolutely roasting hot, and then we'll clean that edge up and then refit into the car. And we'll probably make this a little slot so we can easily pop the ready to in and out without having to move it sideways, which is a bit tricky in its position. All right, so the radiator is held at the top to the engine. Um, the easiest place would be like along the front panel here, of course we want the front to flip forward and that would mean more bolts to come off or clips to bring it forward. We could also bring it into the chassis, but this is gonna get in the way of the air box and stuff here, so it's gonna have to, it's gonna have to go there, <laughs> basically. We will see what effect that has, as with the intercooler, the same thing, where it's got one mount on the chassis and then it's bolt, you know, it's then piped onto. Shut up, birds! Nope, that didn't work. Um, at the same time, we've welded up uh, where this pipe came out originally. We've welded up this bit here, and then we've threaded in it this side, so this is gonna go to the pot. And we've taken out the spring here so that um, it can free flow into a swirl pot, which will be at the top here somewhere. Um, and what I'm just working out now is the lower mount. I'm gonna try and get the lower mount down today and then I can work out pipe sizes and maybe get some orders in and see if there's some OEM pipes that will fit nicely. I basically want the mount there in the middle. I can't really put it both sides for a number of reasons. So I'm gonna put a wide one there. So we've come up with a simple card template that we'll just wrap around underneath. So we'll make that out of some one or two mil steel and put some neoprene rubber on it, sort of clamp it on, have it a nice tight fit. 
and then we'll make a little mount underneath that this will bolt onto, nice and simple. So let's just make that out of some metal. So everyone, this rather simple looking bracket has taken a rather long, complicated period of time. That's what we've come up with. A little bit of rubber, sticky back, we won't stick it on yet. We're gonna use that for a lot of things on the car. Probably lots of anti-vibration. Uh, this is still quite hot, ow. So let me find something to pick it up with. Right. So basically that's gonna sit on the car. Two bolts to hold it in, because it'll probably get in the way when you're getting the engines in and out and stuff. So it's gonna sit somewhere like that. Bottom of the radiator sits in there. Bit of rubber on that. Bottom at the top. Bobby is your mother's, uncle's, brother's, sister's, aunt's cousin. Yeah. I spy a bracket. Nicely in there, we'll cut the M6 bolts. Uh, found them, stainless ones. They'll be very neat and tidy. We won't be painting the brackets until we paint subframe, we get the engine out, etc. And uh, this is all with, with Max for painting. We'll yank the subframe off and bring it home for paint while he's painting the car. And I can be doing little brackets and stuff at the same time. So let's get the bit of neoprene rubber stuff on there. Get the radiator in, bolt it at the top. Check for clearances again. Might be still a little bit of fettling down here. And then we'll work out where the pipes are going to go. Winning. So I've slept on it and I'm not happy with the bracket. I don't like the idea of the radiator moving with the engine, any vibrations. Uh, I was like, ah, it'll be okay, it'll be okay, but I, I think not. So we're going to cut a lot more away from this corner to give clearance to the lambda sensor, the white band, cut this off. I'm going to put a bracket from an already point there to bolt onto down to there. The plan will be uh, that somehow we get an intercooler, uh, uh, sorry, an intake through here somewhere. Somehow, don't ask me how yet. Uh, but I need to work out what space I've got and where to put this extra little bracket once I've got the coolant bottle on. Now I do know that this will fit just, it's going to rub on everything, but everything's going to rub on everything. Um, it just fits there, which is ideal. I might be using one of these on the intercooler as well, a little 7 inch fan, it's the smallest uh, 80 watt fan I can get. Down below this you're like on computer fans, which might be an option. This is our little uh, header tank that I'm going to be running everything to and via, basically. So it's going to, hopefully, with a bracket, sit here like that and you're going to have one pipe going to here we've taken the spring out of this little cap here which i might do another one because i actually have one spare and that's look a bit mank so the spring out of this so it's just a seal what that means is that air can escape go through there and it will self bleed the radiator into the top of this ideal the bottom of this will also go to the radiator and that's allow for expansion um, or part from expansion and then we've got a pipe from the side of the head to go into this. We have a return from the turbo also to go into this. So as you notice, there's two on there and one on there. So we'll probably run uh, the two into the one and one into the other or weld on another pipe. Although my welding will ruin this, so I'd rather not do that if I can. So the first thing to do is mock up where this is going to be, make a bracket and bolt this on somehow. Let's do that. So we're just going to make some nice vegan jackfruit pizza into our bracket. So that's basically what I want the bracket to do and just not shake around much. So we'll make it out of some 2mm steel for a little cross brace, a couple of pings and we can weld that on there quite nicely, I believe. Um, and have a couple of bolts in the back of it. Alternatively just put a nice big couple of bolts there. That time that scene kind of failed on us there, didn't it? Battery died. Didn't even realise battery was low. Uh, this is the bracket we've come up with, and on the actual tank we've put a couple of rivet nuts in there, nice and easy, no fiddling hopefully. And we use a couple of nice little stainless button washers, uh, button little bolts, which I like to use for these. They look good. They work. So probably still pretty hot. 
I've just welded this little extra bracket in just to support it. That'll do the job very nicely. And then we've just cleaned up this, and we're going to weld it about there, and that'll hold it nicely in place. So let's get that welded up, get this buttoned on, and then we can work out some of the pipe work. Cool. Okay, so this doohickey is, is mounted and welded on. Um, this piece comes off when you get the engine and the gearbox and stuff out, so it's not exactly going to cause an annoyance or cut our wrist open when we're leaning in and this is out of the way. And also some nice easily accessible bolts to pop that on off. So this pipe is going to go to the bottom of the radiator, down here somewhere. Uh, this pipe will probably curl off to the top there, and that pipe will take the turbo and head returns back to there. I'm hoping to get the little clip piece that actually attaches OEM to the head and then take the plastic off and put a new piece of pipe on it and a nice Y piece here. We'll see what happens with that. I don't like that mount over there, as previously mentioned. We have this lovely few holes on the side here uh, with threads in, so let's make use of them, shall we? I think just something like that would be nice and simple. The problem is I, I'm going to have an intake coming in this way, and I am worried about putting exactly where I'm going to want to put it. But ideally is the highest point with the radiator, and so if I take it nice and high like that, I think we can come in underneath. So if I make the bracket about there, something like that, we can go either above or below and there should be enough space. The top tip that I've learnt while doing this, get yourself a pretty inexpensive angle ruler. There's a little lock wheel, gives you a digital readout, and the way then you can do is I, I've measured up exactly where I want the, the joint, the, the bend, like that. That's how I want it. And then on the workbench, I just have to line that up with the bend that I want. And look at that. She's spot on, and now I know, all being well, but when I take my piece, which I've bent, it'll be at the angle I want it to be. Not expensive, hugely useful, doubles up as a ruler, and it packages away nicely. So we just turn it off, unlock the joint, lock it away. Whoa, baby, we've gone bracket crazy. Yeah. So there's our bracket holding our bottle on, and there's our little bracket. Another way to reinforce them is you put a little lip around the edge, nice and simple, OEM style, and that is really lovely and strong. And we've welded along there and along there, and we'll put a little weld underneath, almost impossible to weld upside down with MIG. So once we get this arm off, we'll be welding all these up, and grinding it all nice and clean, and giving it a nice, uh, you know, a bit like that, more like a weld like that. And that's tabbed in both sides, so we've got a, a tapped M6 thread on that, M6 thread already in the radiator there, nice and simple. Hopefully an intake pipe will come under here. And uh, we can now get rid of that bracket there. Cut the corner of that off, weld the nice piece of plate in there. Blank that off, put a pipe there. Blank that off and put a pipe there. That's the plan. Let's make it happen. Okay. So, what have I done? Some bad welding, some good welding, some mediocre welding, all within the range of beginner. Uh, this is our takeoff pipe at the bottom. We've added, uh, put it in, bent it round once it was nice and warm, and this will go to the bottom of our tank, of our expansion tank. The big uh, hole that was at the front, which normally would face the other way, we've plugged up. Very nice. Same for the lower one. We have plugged that up. We've welded in a pipe on the side, which will go to the uh, water pump and the lower end, basically a lower engine pipe. We have, I don't know if I've shown you this before, we plugged this side. Get it in focus, there we go, we plugged this side, put out that side, and we cut more of this. And we cut more of this, welded it up, and then we've smoothed it off. And then finally, we've added our top radiator hose connection. So that's all the connections on this to do. So that's the old girl in. Clearance to our lambda now. Oh, hey, that's really good. Now you'll notice that is bolted in and there's still a bit of movement. Now there will be some uh, rubber on feet, sort of foot on the bottom there, but uh, there's still a little bit of movement. So I probably am gonna make a little plate that comes down to the here just to help reduce that. Now I know there's nothing on that side that ideally there would be, but there's nothing really to tag on to this side. Uh, this is gonna come up right to here. I don't wanna tag onto the gearbox. It's close enough to the gearbox as it is. 
and uh, I'm gonna have to shave a little bit there just to make sure we don't rub away at each other and obviously it's on the gearbox and engine it's gonna move the radiator which is what I was trying to avoid so um, that won't be happening it will go on that side um, and as you can see we've got high quality uh, pipe work going on here yeah that's never getting used for anything ever not even washer jets uh, I might use it just to sort of root stuff out and measure it, but that's as much as I'm using that stuff for. Uh, clear was useful. I thought, oh, handy, clear. I'll be able to see the bubbles. I'll also be able to see where it split and exploded everywhere. So, yeah, not happening. It'll work fine. So, middle of summer and actually the uh, sun is setting and there's thunder. So it's time for me to have a cup of tea, I think. Uh, next step, let's get some pipe work in place. Uh, I need to blank off one. Uh, on the here, so I need to take this off, blank that off, rotate it into position, and we'll get the hoses in place. So hose to hose, 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 and then matrix pipes, heaters, plumbing, done. Just done. Oh, the birds seem happy today. Radiator in place, coolant tank in place. Everything else is kind of where it needs to be. We need to fit a hool coolant, a hula. We need to fit a coolant switch thingy here to allow coolant to flow through the matrix because that's the only way you control the heat on these minis. I might have to use a little bypass valve as well to make sure there is coolant flowing through the heat exchanger. I don't want that to be getting too hot. I'll worry about that later, like many other things. But let's get things plumbed up. We want to get some pipes so that the water has a, an easier path to travel than just shooting across. Big box of old pipe, some new pipe. Let's kind of make this work. We have a little bit of an elbow in there already, kind of in its position. And then we can work out all the heat shielding that's going to be required. Because, you know, toasty. So we're blanking off uh, the one pipe that would originally go to the header tank. We just can't make that work. It's just too much of a faff header tank straight from the rad. That's gonna to be totes fine. Uh, we'll work out the little pipes here later. Uh, one matrix pipe runs directly across. It's very nice. We'll have to put a little standoff here just so it doesn't rub through. And then the pipe that comes up here, you can't quite see it, I realize that. Uh, maybe you can if I do that. It's in there. Uh, that comes from the exchanger. It comes from the oil filter. So uh, it comes from the head to the exchanger into the matrix and then back into the system. So we're going to put the little switch, the mechanical lever switch, uh, in line there, which controls the heating on the Mini. Uh, there's not really a spot to put it under the dash, and there's a spot nicely to put it in line. However, it fits our new pipe in lovely, um, but this is too small for that large hose. It's actually this diameter, it's about four mil bigger. So what we've done is we've taken the edge off this, um, just sanded it back, and then we've put, kept taken the end of this off, put it in the vise, and with a little die grind a bit on the end of a Dremel, we've just kept opening it up until this just taps on nicely. So we're gonna mix some araldite, we're gonna glue that on, and that'll give us our connection, and then we'll make just a little bracket, and that'll stand there. And then with a little gland, the, uh, the cable, which is here, will come through the bulkhead from the dash. Simples. So let's make that happen. Let's mix some araldite. Let's tap that on. Yummy. Hopefully. Tap. You'd never know. So let that dry. It's got to be time for a cup of tea, isn't it? That's a little success. Right, cup of tea time. Oh yeah, we are plumbed. When I mean plumbed, I mean we are plumbed. Well, we're not actually, so I don't really mean that. There's a couple of little things to do, two of which really. One is 
put all the hose clamps on but I'm just mocking this up now so that will come in time there's no point putting all the hose clamps on and tying it all down and then find out it doesn't work uh, this has a protective sleeve but we're going to put a heat sleeve around this section of pipework uh, much like we probably will with some of this pipework even though it goes behind this shield so a nice big heat shield over that now we know what that is we can measure it we got this lovely big it's a very very strong piece of radiator pipe got to admit right in the diameter but it is so tough that sort of more bend than that and it kinks amazing if you're gonna like run pipes front to rear or something but other than that it's just too tough this stuff so the short little radiator pipe for the top wasn't gonna work so we did what I thought I should have done really in the first place and got my box of old radiator pipes out. All the old pipes, intercoolers and radiator bits and fuel pipes. Really handy to keep a box of this. And basically I've made the cooling system out of that. So we've got two peeps of old uh, HDI hose, different diameters, to drop down from back of the water pump here to the bottom of the radiator. A little joiner in the middle, no problem at all that, that's fine. Be useful for taking things apart here. Uh, rather than have to take the whole pipe out. I do like to reduce as many joints as possible, but sometimes, like that, it's okay. To gain clearance for that pipe round the back, we did two things. We blanked this off, as I've shown you earlier, I think. And also, the two bolts of the alternator come through so far. They come through to about here. Um, I presume, I don't know, it almost looks like they're on bolts. So we've locked them off, naturally. Sorted. Uh, the top pipe at the moment is still clear. I might try and keep that. We'll see how it goes with some heat. But it's quite a useful thing just to see what air's flowing and, and if everything's working quite nice. Uh, this top hose here will sit flush once we've clamped her on. Um, but it's quite a tricky one because it's stepped down. But I found some of my hose which did the little step down nicely. So that's going to be spot on there. We've got our expansion tank bottom hose connected up. Our hose here goes to the head and tees off to the turbo. And we've got a little clip coming, it's a special Ford fitting. We've actually ordered a new pipe. Breakers wanted more than a new pipe, so we've ordered a new pipe, cut the end off, and then that will get attached to there. And that joins up nicely. And then the overflow, if necessary, probably, uh, goes around to the back of the gearbox, so it's not all over the wheels. Lots of traction and all that. And then the block fitting, which is just in there, comes out to the turbo. So that's grand. And let's get some light, because you can't see a thing, to be honest. Oh, oh man, this place is a mess. Oh, I'm dying. Uh, so on the back here, we haven't put a diverter in yet, which we might need to do. Uh, but if I showed you earlier, uh, we added the extra sleeve sort of on the end of this, so it connects up with the pipes. We'll have a little hole that goes through the bulkhead just there to the cable, and we'll have a little bracket we'll make. Uh, probably not today. Uh, maybe once the engine's out even and then the two pipes for the matrix running around as I say we might need to put a little diverter across here just so that when we um well actually that doesn't work <laughs> I'll have to try and take a T off from further back if necessary because once this blocks this off it stops the flow to the uh, oil and coolant transfer I'm not sure I'm happy with that but this will do for now um, and a uh, second matrix hose is also in. You can just sort of see it there. It goes under. It's a simple one. And while we're at it, we ordered the vacuum pipe just while we're on pi pipes. There's actually a sensor on the Fords which goes on the brake sent uh, servo. It happens to fit beautifully on the mini servo. So really chuffed with that. Uh, and then we've just got a piece of hose, a thick hose, that goes to there. The original plastic pop stuff wasn't going to work. I'm hoping there's clearance to the bonnet. There will be clearance to the bonnet. We'll just shut it really hard. That will clearance it. So as far as coolant hoses is concerned, we're mocked up. We've already done the boost side. The next thing to do, maybe the next episode, it'll certainly be a different episode, is the intake. So it goes from a turbo, loop round, this sort of gap I'm sort of left. Hopefully it will come through that gap there somehow, down through here somehow, and then through a filter here somehow. I have no idea how that's going to fit. Out of bonnet. Sorted.